it is the 25th of march we're back out here towards the western side of pennsylvania doing a kind of follow-up i came out here to trap beaver specifically over the week of the first and ended up getting not really snowed out it did snow every day but it was kind of like an in-between period it wasn't really safe um the ice was not thick enough to walk on but too thick for my boat so consequently i could see a lot of stuff but not get to it now i you know used that time for scouting cut my trip in half and then uh decided i was going to come back out here for this last week well now it's 72 degrees i'm in a t-shirt sweating to death but the only real concern traveling towards the end of the season was who got what and with a down fur market and how much work beaver trapping is i can't really see a lot of people you know out here hustling there's going to be some older guys but the younger crowd it doesn't seem like took to it so i have this in my head as i'm walking out here to this bank uh lodge that i had pegged out and you start playing games with yourself positive whatever but ended up seeing a nice beaver kind of startled him out in the middle of the pond it's probably another half an hour to dark so i got to keep moving but come over here so that, that that's good for sign at least one of them's here and uh ended up trying to figure out what what sets to do and i found in pennsylvania you can't be any closer than uh, the minimum you can be away from a lodge is 15 foot so what i ended up doing here i found a right out here is where he was out towards the center and there's a spot over here i'm going to put a portable pocket but as for right here they have a nice trail coming along the edge of the stream so what i did was block that off so that's not as easy to access and then bring him down here to the water level where he's just going to slide in and then put uh, a belial 330 with some of pete's special sauce so if you imagine you're coming in as a beaver it's going to look like something pretty tasty so we'll see if there's something there tomorrow um I've found most times if you're close, they're going to at least work it. So it's where conibears bears are kind of nice. But again, sun's going down. I really got to keep moving to get this other set in here. I just wanted to sort of show that one to see if we end up getting a catch with it tomorrow. If so, I'll put that uh, on the other end of this. Okay, so we're, we're right next to where I made that other set over here. And we made uh, sort of a little improvised caster mount. I just took a pile of, uh, of nastiness here and made a fake caster mound. Now, I have a drowner cable, so when they get snapped, they take it out and they're gone. And this expanded pan, Sleepy Creek number three. So, what the plan is, and we'll see how well it works out, this portable pocket is a mistake. It's about 30 inches long, and they just can't pull that out. But this this one's not actually going to do very much to drown them but they'll keep them occupied and the other end's tied to a, a 10 foot drowner with a sandbag so next thing i'm going to do here and this one will be good and we'll be on to the next one is to get oh you should always sniff it yep get some of that good good lure give it a little swish in the water yet maybe a little bit on here so they want to smell it and then as you're swimming up it'll be right in here and this stick will sort of keep them in front of one of my traps kind of in here and then that'll poke them in the chest they should stick their foot down the drowner gets them and they should be waiting out there until i get her off. so i just wanted to make sure they're not 20 foot apart i get a good feeling about these sets if they don't They'll get some activity tonight one way or the other but if it doesn't happen i have no doubt that uh it will over the next couple days but that's that's really as easy as it gets well back here at two of the sets i showed you yesterday and uh conibear over there has nothing in it this one has a trap going and i can't really tell what's down there looks like uh might just be a little beaver, but a beaver's a beaver, so. Oof, nope.
Well, that's a decent sized beaver. Oof. There's nothing to sniff at there. Looks like uh, it's that time of the year got chewed up a little bit by some other beavers. Tail's a little nipped up. That's good, that means it's not alone in here. So there you go. That's uh, what we're looking for. It is pretty wild though. That, uh, I mean, it's not the world's biggest beaver, but a beaver is a beaver is a beaver. That's crazy that they're chewing at each other like that. And it doesn't have a huge hail. Well, like I said, we'll take it. I don't think he's alone. At least, uh, if over here, maybe. Uh, not, uh, not on the other side. So, I'm gonna go ahead and reset this and uh, keep moving. Love those expanded pans on this number threes. The, uh, the spot over here is really gorgeous. I don't think it's the last. That just so happens to be the uh, first trap check. So we'll take it. And of course, we had said the other one's got nothing going on. So, all right, on to the next. Yeah, one of the things that people uh, that don't live in areas with them don't pick up on is exactly how much damage these things do because that tree's going to die. And, uh, there's a bunch of them over there. This one's already done. It's just got a little bit older. Than they uh, have to chew. Otherwise, their teeth go around in their head and they die. But they're going to do it over and over. And I don't care whose trees or what trees. And one of these things where there might not be a lot of trees. So over here's a real good one. It's something that uh, if you don't manage these things, right here is real fresh. We're going to set over there for sure. Be surprised if we don't have something by them all. Like, yeah, here, that tree's probably. You just sit here and shoot all the pieces. There's another one. There's a whole bunch of action down here. This is going to be a good spot to set. Get some of these out of here for these people. But it's not hard to figure out where they're at. <laughs> it, uh, yeah, something that, uh, not manage in your up shits creek if you live anywhere around it or have any particular interest in the property because we're gonna do this night after night after night I shouldn't be walking underneath of that there's one the old uh oh, here's another one and there's another one just two the pieces so, all right. I don't know if you, how well you can see that, but there is a beaver swimming right across there. He looks to be decent size. He's been very good. It's pretty stereotypical. Um, I'm gonna rush through the set. It's a portable pocket. Same deal as before. Drowning cable. And uh, he is not too happy. So that's good. Got like a little plaster mark down here. Hopefully he'll be head by the morning between those two. So. Let's uh, let's get out of here and let him do his thing. It shouldn't hurt anything. But Pennsylvania is about all the closer I get. That's probably 25 foot. 15 to be legal, and another 10 for the game warden to uh, to not have a question with. But this house has gotten immense. I'm still swimming down there. This house has gotten immensely bigger since I was in here last. Pennsylvania won't let you uh, set right on the house, which is disappointing. But that's where they live, and uh, we'll get out of here, see what goes for tomorrow. It's a uh, almost 
Well, let me say this. If you are kind of about half sick in the head and like getting tore up with briars and carrying out a bunch of weight on your back, then uh, beaver trapping is probably for you. But I will tell you, if you do not find hard work enjoyable, I would probably recommend you uh, trap muskrats or raccoons or something because this, this house is really, really far down in here. The only way through here is to walk across these little sandbars. It's beautiful country, but it is most certainly not going to be for everybody. And here's some fresh activity up here as well. The, uh, I'll come up here in the dead of night and cut in stuff. Maybe not so much, but this is uh, the latest you trap beaver. Pennsylvania is March 31st, year to year. So everything else is done. And this year, for whatever reason, it turns out to be 72 degrees here for the next two days. Now, I mean, you can look. You can't really. If they sold tickets to add here, it just wouldn't be as much fun. You get to see so many things as a trapper that the average person doesn't. Hell, most people have never seen that beaver. They've never seen that house. So I'm glad that... Uh, it's like every time I turned around, they'd pop out. Both places I was at looked really good. So I was going to push them off until the end of the day and sort of run and gun and go uh, set a bunch of places. And I still might, but I think there's such a high probability there's going to be something in there that probably should just uh, go there first, get some catches, but I don't know. This is the closest one to where I'm staying, and the farthest one's an hour north, and I like to get up and burn dark hours in my driving versus daylight, because that first place up where I haven't totally scouted out, I just picked a few houses out, it was really tough with that, that water being closed up, but we'll get uh, some catches between those four traps by tomorrow, I'd be highly highly surprised but all right have a good night well here we are getting out across the lake it's pretty beautiful sunrise now i do have an outboard but the uh Game Commission regulations say that you are not allowed to run gasoline motors on any of their uh, bodies of water. So we're going to get over here and check out a couple of lodges that uh, I had seen when I was out here on my little scouting trip, but could not get to without such an extreme amount of effort it would barely be worth it. So water's still the best way to travel in a lot of parts. Uh, so, we shall see. Okay, so, right over there, we have two big uh, lodges. Another one down through there, this beaver's been swimming around, slapping his tail. So, what I have here is a 330 Bilal, and these uh, brackets make this pretty easy. Normally, now granted, you know, everybody's always learning. What I have found is that coming off of these lodges, they like to have them, at least in my area, a little bit deeper out in the water. And then they almost always have a channel that they come in to go get branches and stuff out of the cut down trees. What I'm looking for here is a spot where it gets kind of narrow. I want to say right there, make sure my safeties are off. That's pretty much it for that one. Maybe sometimes and again trapping out of a boat's not as much fun i only wore uh shorter boots today i'll put they call a dive stick across here this is not really the world's greatest example but that right there is all it'll take if he decides he wants to come up this way 
They'll swim right through that trap. See those sticks in there? Might put uh, one or two more here on the side. But again, I don't really feel like taking a bath this morning. That was the whole reason for bringing a boat. But he knows. You gonna see that? Got it. Per pretty, pretty morning out here. I'm sure he's not the only one left, so we're gonna make a couple more sets out here and uh, see what goes. Get a little bit up closer view. A lot of people live in the city and just in general places that don't have beavers. But one thing I found out since I started trapping, there's uh, a lot more people live close to animals than ever know it. But yeah, that's probably oof, coming out of the bottom. That's it's tough to say. It's a nice size one. It's not the biggest one I've seen. You can see the little trail where they walk up the side to put more on it. Got a beaver swimming right out here in front of me again. You know, I'm not sure how well with the wind and everything you can see that, but. I was uh, unsure whether there were any in here, and it seems like there's plenty of beaver pretty much everywhere you're looking at here. I think he's got some interest in this dam over here. He stepped on it uh, walking across, and now there's some water running. So we shall see. But I'm uh, Not sure how close he's going to come right now before he does a tail slap. There we go. Well, I didn't end up filming making this set yesterday, but uh, some private property they're having issues with beaver. This was a uh, portable pocket with a number three, and the trap's gone, so we'll see what's in here. I can't really see. Fingers crossed. Something. Oh, beaver. That's what we like. That's a smaller one, but. And that's what we're looking for. It's actually uh, kind of unexpected that that's a back foot catch, but. These, uh, these traps here were good. And of course, I can't really argue with that. So, not the world's biggest beaver by a long shot, but it's not not chewed up and these people need them to get out of here, so. And it, even better news, the drowning cable's set up, so. Sometimes those things get uh, pretty tweaked. It might just be a one time you steal so now we got our uh yeah it might need tightened up a little bit sometimes they pull in a little bit but that's that's what you're looking for you want that thing to get in the trap slide right down this wire take it to the bottom because even a little beaver like that they're uh pretty strong little buggers and we don't want them sitting fighting the trap all night twisting the leg off or whatever the case may be maybe they're toe caught and then they end up getting out now these traps here are uh, the maximum legal size you can have in PA that would be a sleepy creek number four we'll set that right there Just for good measure, do a change up more here. We use some of my uh, Lewis and Clark formula stuff. Swizzled around in the water a little bit. I even like to leave a stick like that. So hopefully we'll see what happens again till tomorrow. It's definitely good news to uh, to get one out of here. I don't think there's a lot of 
mature beavers in here but this is the time of year that the uh the young ones are starting to move around so since i'm some sort of uh self-hating idiot the uh double lodge set up here i ended up walking all the way back dragging another beaver out and uh, coming back and setting up in here now it's tough because you have a lodge there and you have a lodge there and you have a dam down there to stay legal within pennsylvania but staying in the middle of these there's just enough space and i'm they're 15 foot off of both of them so we have a portable pocket i'm gonna drown our cable to a sandbag with rocks in it and a number three uh sleepy creek here waiting and i put the stick in here to sort of guide them in like so so we shall see and then of course i have uh it's twin over here we can go take a look while we're at it and i have a fair amount of confidence with the sign that's sitting in here but uh, we we'll end up getting something this is just the end of the world as far as this place is concerned this is where they wanted to be and again i wanted to make sure that we're totally above board legal we're probably 20 well, 30 feet away from that and we have same deal portable pocket tucked underneath all that muck sandbag uh full rocks 10 foot drowner cable number three sleepy creek and I want to say that this one is baited with backbreaker and the other one down there is baited with uh, enrager by I'm trying to think here predator control group Clint Locklear stuff so we shall see which one uh, takes the cake here but like I said with the amount of sign and stuff in here it's not too hard to see where this one should have the, uh, a beaver sitting tomorrow regardless. Hopefully we don't have a mess. Uh, but just the amount of feed sitting in there. They were figuring the state of winter and I just kind of doubt as far as this is that anybody's as crazy as I am. So we shall see. First uh, thing after sunrise here. And this is, I know we're looking into the sun. This is terrible. One of the biggest lodges uh, I've seen so far this trip. It's got to be at least six foot coming up. It's a good example of uh, a lodge that's used year to year. Now, my only hope is that big lodges draw attention, but that particular one doesn't uh, have a bunch of trappers out here that were after it. But I don't know. The more work it seems to be, the less people. Uh, want to trap and beavers on the high side but that is one granddaddy lodge so let's hope those traps do good over there and we shall see big had to get some video while we're rolling up through here. this this place is just on fire for ducks and geese today and it's just one of those crystal clear mornings where the water's glass trolling motor doesn't have to fight like yesterday in that uh, windstorm nonsense. It's just waterfowlers paradise out here. Ducks on ducks. On geese. Ducks over there. Looks like there's a big beaver lodge up here, so that's why we're actually here.
Seems like every beaver lodge I come across in here, I say is the biggest one for the year. This thing is a monstrosity. It's what we like to see now. I think I saw some caster mounds uh, just up from this, which is a good sign, you know, because honestly, a lodge out here like this is going to get used over and over, and it is dispersal time, but, uh, you know, I, I can't imagine the amount of effort that it took to, even if you trap all these out, something wouldn't move back in, but we're going to back up over here and see if we can't get a couple sets in, or at least a set, and then uh, see what goes. It's just gorgeous, gorgeous morning to be out here. Can't really argue. Well, I'm back at these sets uh, I had showed you the other day. Two nights in a row. This guy got lucky. He set that trap off and didn't get his foot in it. But today, there he's sitting dead in the uh, the conibear. So that's that's a win by my book. That's a nice sized beaver. Oh, sunfish. It's not the biggest thing I've ever caught by a long shot, but it'll do. Yep. Gotta love this bly. I'll smack some. I've never seen anything that was inside of a getaway. They're worth the extra money. Now some guys would say, oh, you can set more dukes for the same money, but if you live in a state with uh, crap number restrictions, then it doesn't really matter now, does it? I have to tell you, I'd rather be a quality over quantity guy. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to argue on that. Nice tail on her, too. Now, I had this set. If there's smaller ones in here, maybe we'll just put that down just a little bit more. That's the deal with these guys. You might get lucky once or twice, but as long as you have the time or the inclination, eventually you'll get them. These are strong traps. Comes back to the uh, safety angle of things. You really, really, really need to be uh, safe. And I think Bilal makes one of the safest traps between how solid these safeties clip on, everything about them. They stay where they're supposed to, so you're not going to have an accidental safety flip. Really, I have no complaints with them whatsoever. So we'll go over here and reset this other one yet. I have nothing to complain about with that. That's the problem end of them. Should be good swelled up. Casters. Except for in the real little ones, they're not going to get anything yet. But no, this tail's not really bit up. We'll leave these set for a couple of days yet and see what else is in here. I'm not going to call it a loss just yet. about all we got to do for that just like we had it set up before you know he maybe that was another one that set that trap off but it's just as likely he hit it and swam in here and an accident we got him so let's walk across these underwater logs see how many more times I can test my luck try and get away wearing these short boots There's no telling what happened there. Yep, no telling. But that's why I like to set a couple. Because then you got backups. Could be 
if you're already going to be making a trip and again you know if you can manage it I think right about there's a spot if you can manage you know to figure out how many traps you can get away with setting where and still stay underneath of your uh, your trap checks or your, I'm sure your trap number restrictions then uh, I was always told with everything if the spot's good enough to set one it's good enough to set two Whoa. looks a lot nicer sitting in the canoe I thought it was supposed to be the other way around they always look bigger running away <laughs> all right on to the next all right here we go traps going Chowner, uh I think I can see a flat tail down there this was uh one I'm not sure if I filmed or didn't there's beaver tracks all over the place around this thing I guess it just took him a minute to uh commit so let's see what's in here oh yeah what we're looking for right there nice front foot catch took him right down to the drowner it's a decent beaver nothing huge but that seems to be par for the course but yeah he was all all up in this place uh, surprisingly enough I didn't uh, get anything around the corner I actually thought those were probably better spots but it is what it is so let's just uh, reset and this is sleepy creek number three long spring if you want them they're gonna kind of be hard to get a hold of at this point because sleepy creek is not uh, in business I like this spot because it's a nice deep drop off and there's enough of a shelf here but you can see all the tracks he was definitely sniffing around for a little bit we're gonna put a little more lower in there for the next person person next uh, beef uh, I think the old Delta red Predator control group, that's Clint Locklear, makes that. Get a nice, you know the rules, gotta give it a snap. Swizzle a little bit in the water, and hopefully the next one will do the same thing. Come, yeah, this is kinda nice, it's clear water come straight up here swimming go to put their foot down to smell this or jump in and go around and then uh hopefully we'll have another one sitting here i'm not complaining over the size of the beaver it's more important that you're actually catching something because nothing takes the wind out of your sails like not catching so yep yeah. No chews on his tail. No chews on him. These are nice sized ones. I don't even have to put them on a carrier, just throw them right on my back. Now, this is probably worth mentioning. The uh, back foot considerably larger than the, the front. That's why you uh, are gonna have a benefit if you live in a state where you can. Use seven and a half, I think is, is the max that uh, most places make if you can target that back foot or, or whether you target it or not it is going to happen but if you live in states like pennsylvania where six and a half is the best you're allowed to do well just in general principle that that front foot catch is best because it lets you drown them in less water because you get their face down it might not be a concern for you but it's definitely something to think about so We'll get this thing uh, up and out of here and keep running, but that, uh, we'll see. There's, I can't tell if it was him walking all over around this place. I know there's more beaver in here. It's just a matter of uh, what comes through in the time that I have. So we shall see. All right. 
Got to the uh, first set here on the long wall, and the trap's gone. All kinds of footprints here, almost looks like. We'll see, we're gonna see what it is. Oh, beaver. Good beaver. Medium sized beaver, but perfect catch. Perfect catch. It's awesome, of course. Yep, it's a younger one, but I believe that was the Enrager. It's good, everything worked like it was supposed to. The only question is, is if my suspicion's right and nobody did come back in here. Oh, there's another one over there. Better get over there, he's still alive. This is what we don't like to see, but it'll be all right. He must be a decent size. Of course, I catch two of them the whole way back in here. Surprised he hasn't drowned himself yet. All right, so we managed to take care of that situation. We got uh, beaver number two here. And uh, same deal, real nice full pad catch. They really didn't like that caster being in here. I have a feeling we're gonna have to try and reuse this drowner until we throw it out and it'll stretch up. He's been probably at it most of the night, but if you get enough weight in that, as long as that thing's stretched out, it'll be, be all right. I got the other one remade a while. It's gonna be a nice pile of stuff to carry up. <laughs> but, you know, I've always said I'd rather walk a mile dragging a deer then uh, with walk a hundred yards with my hands in my pockets and the same is true for beavers definitely absolutely the best thing you could ever want is to get a double here because at least if I'm dragging it in that's success see what I mean now that drowner even though it's a little coiled up We'll uh, have enough to uh, keep that thing. Now here's what I did yesterday. I had this branch in here just enough, sort of channels them in the center of the trap pants right there. And we'll get this mud all good and slicked up so that they know what's up. You want them to really think there's somebody's pumping around on their, their backyard. Of course this muck here's terrible hard to get up <laughs> almost everywhere else I go you can just get it but that really from the response I was looking at these beaver did not like the fact that somebody was bumping around in their backyard at all we're gonna make this stink I put uh, Delta Red on that one this one had the back breaker on before we may, might just stick with that because if nobody's been in here these are not the last two beavers and judging by the fact that it was a double on the very first day the distance that it takes to get back in here I have to think that this was probably untouched the entire season the only reason I found it is because you could see one lodge through a little gap in the trees driving down the road and sitting there playing the game with the uh, might actually throw that drowner off a little bit to the side it looks like it might be just a smidge deeper water in there maybe get his, the next one's face down a little bit more oh yeah 
Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. I would say that's probably a lot better. It just looks like it shallows up as it comes over here towards the dam. So, but yeah, I don't think anybody's gonna argue with those two. Stick with the old stank. Remember the rules. You always gotta give it a sniff, make sure. If you don't like the smell of caster, you better find something else to do with your time. To a beaver trapper, that's about as good as it gets. Love that stink. I want to put it on air fresheners and get it in my house. I think. Of course, I do believe my wife would probably lose her mind. I like to smear a little bit on the back. And then, not that I think we need it now. Get a little bit of sack oil stink around here just just a drop or two clean off the bottle it end up being more than a drop or two now there's guys that's just sack oil saved from some beaver I caught before there's people that swear by just using that in and of itself for bait and that was not taken from a beaver that was in this way so they're gonna smell that and think another beaver was here and made that caster mound. And hopefully uh, between those two things, that little bit of guiding, come right in on that, that trap. Right in the V. Worked yesterday, we'll see if it works tomorrow, so. It's, uh, Start figuring how to get our hump on because I'm gonna have to hump both these beavers up and over and out. <laughs> but I consider that a win, so we'll see what happens tomorrow. Well, ended up getting another one. This is the biggest one of this trip so far. It's nice, nice beaver. Nice, nice beaver. So that makes three I've got to strap on my back. But the good news is I'm at least back from the. Uh, the other spot so but that uh, that's everything you want out of a beaver that's it's a big old gal but nothing in the uh, kind of bear to the other side of it we shall see I was actually half right in this spot off in here that there wasn't gonna be much else but uh, we'll leave them out yet we'll see just realized I uh, almost started cutting on these without messing with anything so here's today got uh, five of them two are pretty good ones they all seem like the uh the caster glands are going to be decent or at least they'll be big oil sacks which aren't a total loss um as well definitely some nice tails on them but there's nothing really worth writing uh into the the contest trapper man's having they're all kind of run of the mill i mean even that one's not even six inches across it seems like for whatever reason when I'm out here and it's colder I end up getting the ones with uh, bigger tails but that is what it is I mean there's some uh, good leather to be made out of wallet made there's a woman uh, darling fur and leather company she's out of I believe Michigan her quality on anything is, is great everything's totally custom but well and the skulls are definitely uh, worth keeping when they have nice teeth to them people give you a couple dollars for that so though the meat's good to eat pound for pound these are the most useful animal to me even a deer i mean you can tan a, a deer hide you can use the uh, tendons or at least i do out of the legs the tendons along the back straps are good for making bow strings but beaver it just seems like i don't know i'm hooked on catching these things it is some different kind of torture <laughs> if you're used to uh different kinds of oh there we go different kinds of trapping but uh you know fox trapping muskrat all that pales in comparison to i carried three of these out it was uh not this one but the other big one and then two of the uh on the left here all at once and it was a long drag but you know if you're not afraid of a little hard work these are a lot of fun and it's 
a huge thing to get these out of the, the areas. They're always going to come back, but they do so much damage out here. It's insane. So think about it. All right, coming into the first set of the day. This was uh, one of a couple places where I had beavers swimming around in front of me. Traps gone. Hopefully that's a good sign. Yeah, feels like there's more than just a sandbag on there. Or not. Okay. Little guy. Beaver's a beaver. Back foot catch. It's the smallest one I caught yet, but uh, again, a beaver is a beaver is a beaver. Doesn't look uh, chewed up or anything. And the drowner's still good, but you know, a win's a win. The old saying is, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. And then you'll see how worn down his teeth are. And might realize it's uh, best years are behind it. Again, this is that portable pocket, 30 inch smooth rod, with a piece of probably inch and a half pipe on it. One end's crimped. Not that that matters that much. And then we have a uh, sandbag wire to the other end. Make sure that is very secure with a number three Sleepy Creek here. I do want to get expanded pans on these. We just set it in like so. I'm going to relower that. I don't know what the likelihood is that there's more of them in here, but I wouldn't mind finding out because really this set's only going to be in here another day. I'll be pulling this stuff. So we're going to switch over to some backbreaker here. Uh oh. Maybe not. Got to find a stick with some more backbone to it. I think we're scraping the bottom. Now this was the one that uh, every time I'd come in, the reason it tipped me off, there's not that much active sign, which leads me to believe there's not a huge amount of them, but there's fresh mud on this dam. When I say fresh, I mean footprints in it and whole nine, so. So we're going to uh, let him set over there and walk across. I do have a uh, 3.30 on the other side. A little closer to those lodges. Actually, you know what? There is two lodges in here. I wonder... Nah, it's tough to say. This gets... This is one of those places it's easier to get to. Consequently, it gets a lot more pressure. So, just something to keep in mind. Harder to get to, the better chances are that there's still beaver that haven't seen a trap this year yet. So... We shall see. And here we are at the second trap of the day. And I can see there's a beaver in that. Again, doesn't look like a really big one. But uh, and I thought about this after I set this. Might be interesting to get something out if it got caught. Uh, it's bigger than the first one. Here's something that's uh, indispensable. A good pair of setters. These are the Sleepy Creek 330 setters. And I've had these uh, five or six years now. I was initially worried whether the aluminum would be strong enough, but there's barely any wear on these things. pair of setters is uh, indispensable. Love those Belial safety. I love everything about Belial. Yeah, fat little guy. 
still limp? Hmm. Definitely must have caught him this morning. So, I mean, these brackets are pretty nice too. If for setting all kinds of areas. I like get behind the head catch. They're you know, not really that heavy either if you have to go in for a distance, but Well, I'd, I'd say we're off to a good start today. Two, two in the the take, and we didn't even make it. And then I take that. I get. I didn't even make it very far at all. We'll leave that back in there and see if there's a. Uh, any more in here it's kind of tough to say because again this place doesn't have much sign i wouldn't have said there was two of them in here and i've been uh playing with i thought was one of them in here they set that trap off and got away here's another thing a piece of just electrical conduit cut you know with some uh some two hole swivels and one as a stop and another one up top and you have a nice little critter carrier not as important but it just goes on like so you can make these for pennies on the dollar or you could buy them through f t the fur harvesters but you just have them like that the one thing i did was put pipe insulation on and electrical tape it because it will put a hurting on your shoulders with a bigger one so looks like my only mistake this morning was uh not bringing in a second uh, carrier. Go ahead and put some of this green beaver lure in here. This is Bob Wilson's green beaver. Just to throw around, get him interested in the idea of coming into this hole. I yeah, throw a little stick down there. I actually had given up uh, hope on the idea that this set was going to do anything for me, so. I was just about to say it was time to move, but it's a couple days. But, you know, we'll take everything we can get when it comes to the, just the uh, mental boost you get from catching something versus coming and checking dead traps, which... If you do that over and over, you got nobody to blame but yourself. There is a reasonable amount of time that it's worth trying to see if there's something there or if you see sign. But realistically, you know, you got to always be moving stuff. Every day, something's moving somewhere, whether it's five feet from where the other one was. And, and just a little tweak because you're like, oh, you see things as you're going through the process. But two for two. A little bit later start. It's quarter after eight already, so... Um, or quarter to nine. I wanted to let that rain cook off. Getting out on the boat on the next two spots won't be that much fun if it's pouring in my face, but it is what it is. So, all right. Well, I don't know how good the recordings are gonna be, being that it's pouring down rain, but uh, got to this farthest trap down here in the marsh and we do definitely have a beaver sitting there. The water level come up a little bit. I forget how solid any of this was, if I could even Nope, 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 nope. That's a wet leg. <laughs> yep, that's why we have the boot. So we'll, uh, oh man, that went up inside the boot. Be one for the bloopers reel. We'll get this guy out of here and get this reset. I'll give you a shot here. It's always a bonus to see a guy make an ass out of himself. Oh, that's a nice beaver. Oh man. About flipped the boat over. Ah. Beautiful catch too. Beautiful catch.
Yep, glad to take the time to come down in here because he is a big boy. Looks like he somehow managed to get the chain wrapped around his head on top of everything else. That's nice. Let's get some bigger rocks up there. Ah. Yeah, it's a big old beaver. That tail's definitely going into the contest. sometimes how in the heck did this beaver get this stuff tangled up but I'll tell you this brought a drowning rod and another trap I think I just got my answer on uh, whether it's worth setting another one in here or not That shows you them portable pockets are the way to go because this is not that uh, firm of dirt by any means. And that big a beaver didn't get that out of there. That should tell you all you need to know. There's a nice catch on that thing too. I can't really complain. My lower is the whole way in the back. We'll see how how well this works out. Yeah, about as well as I thought it would. What I don't want to do set off my trap or fall back in there because this is a mucky mucky bottom in here It didn't need to fall in today. That's set back in action. I think what we're going to do is double down on this and put another one right beside it. Because if you're coming in for one, might as well do two. Drowning rod. Let's 
just didn't have any of these available because again this trap uh, limit thing you gotta gotta bounce your resources around Hopefully, we'll wind up with two for the price of one in here. Or at least, well, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to say one would get missed there and come straight over. That might just be wishful thinking. But when you got a behemoth like that sitting, I'd say there's good chance there's a couple more around. Maybe. Live a lot and maybe land as trappers. I like where that trap's at. I like where that trap's at. All right. Man, that is a big tank. Holy shit. Glad I got him when I got him. That's what we're looking for. Big old, big old beaver. So yeah, we'll uh, see what happens with that till tomorrow.